Hello Star Citizens, Buzzkiller here, and welcome back to the channel. Now that 2.5 has gone live to the main servers, I wanted to give you a full review of the Misc Reliant core. So, let's get started. Now there have been a few changes to the ship since the PTU build, and most of those changes have not been for the better. Let's start off with weapons. The ship comes stock with two size 1 M3A laser cannons. Now these weapons are fixed and they cannot be upgraded to a gimbal mount because the mounts themselves are size 1 as well. Now I typically upgrade these when I'm fighting the ship. And my favorite weapons to put on are either the size 1 laser repeater which is the bulldog repeater or for a little more punch the 9 series long sword. For the end cap, we have a size 3 weapon mount, and I typically put a size 3 laser repeater on here as well. Now you can put a size 2 weapon with a gimbal, or any other size 3 weapons. Uh, the mantises are a decent choice as a ballistic option. Let me go ahead and switch out this other M3A for a laser cannon as well, or for a long sword as well. Now the change in the live version is that the right hand size 3 mount is no longer here. Now it normally comes with an end cap, but unfortunately I accidentally removed it by placing it on the other wing. And as you can see, I have no, I have no port modification point to put it back on. Now I don't know if this is a bug or a feature. So the Tana is the fighter version of this ship, so maybe the Tana will come with that mount, or as I said, it might just be a bug that'll be resolved in 251 or further down the road. So unfortunately, that's a big loss to the ship's firepower. The only other hard points we have access to are the power plants and the coolers. And of course, there's a size one power plant on each wing for two size one power plants and two size 1 coolers as well. And of course we can't modify the shields, but I believe there's two size 1 shields also located somewhere in the wing. Of course, first and foremost, the Misc Reliant Core is a cargo ship. So since the cargo system is not yet in-game, I have to come to the stats page to give you an idea of how it holds up against its competitors. So I have a selection of starter ships here and second tier ships. Starting off on the far left, we have the Mustang Alpha, and its base variant has a cargo capacity of 10. The base Aurora MR, which most people start off with, has a cargo capacity of 13, which is just a little bit better. Now the cargo variant of the Aurora nearly doubles that with 23 cargo units. Also here I have the Avenger Titan, which is the cargo variant of the Titan fighter. And it has no cargo units listed. However, looking at the size of the cargo hold, it looks to be about the same size as the Reliant Core. It's longer, but a bit more narrow. So I'm not sure if that equals out or if it causes you to be able to carry less cargo since the door has to have access as well. The Reliant Core itself has a respectable 30 cargo units. And that is only overshadowed by the Hull A, which is a dedicated cargo ship, and it comes in at 48. Now I've also had the Argo MPUV cargo variant here, because the cargo pod on it looks to be maybe just a little bit smaller than the Reliant Core, but it's only listed as having a car capacity of two cargo units. So that goes to show you that we'll have to take all of these values with a grain of salt because stats are always subject to change and we don't know when the last time these stats were actually updated. When it comes to raw speed, the Reliant falls somewhere in between the Mustang and the Aurora. Its top speed in SCM is 210 meters per second with a top afterburner speed of 320. And of course, it cruises at a decent 610 meters per second. 
However, when it comes to maneuverability, the ship is lacking, and it's actually gotten worse since the PTU. Now, in the previous video, when I gave you the first flight test of the ship, I told you that the yaw axis maneuvers faster than the pitch axis. However, the yaw axis rotates slower than the pitch axis. So the ship rotates in yaw very, very slowly. And this has gotten worse in the live build. It used to actually rotate much better than this. However, if you watch the forward direction indicator, that's the little circle with the arrow, you can see it does catch up with the crosshair fairly quickly when I stop turning. Now let me get away from the border here. You are approaching simulation boundary. Now when compared to the pitch axis, the ship rotates much, much faster in that axis. However, if you watch the forward direction indicator again, you can see it takes much longer for the ship's velocity to catch up, or ship's direction to catch up with the direction you're facing. Now this is not just because the ship is faster in the pitch axis. You see if I take a slow pitch, that that forward direction indicator is still pretty slow to catch up. However, in the yaw, it's significantly faster. Now, I'm not sure the reasoning behind this. I would think that it, if it was slow in the yaw axis to pivot, then it would be slow to catch up as well. But of course, I'm hoping that maybe they'll do another balance pass on the ship and fix some of the issues with maneuverability because it is a Xi'an ship and it's supposed to be fast and maneuverable. When it comes to combat, the Reliant really struggles. The ship's lack of maneuverability and weak weapons loadout make killing even AI targets a chore. That coupled with the weak shields and fragility of the ship's hull make it a poor choice for Vandal Swarm, let alone PvP game modes such as Battle Royale. The aforementioned poor maneuverability combined with a large side cross-section make avoiding hits nearly impossible. To compound the issue, a few hits to the thrusters will cause them to stop functioning altogether, making it even harder to maneuver. Losing an entire wing typically sends the ship into an uncontrollable death spiral. If you find yourself in this situation, you may as well self-destruct, as you'll never be able to slow down enough to even exit your seat. Another huge frustration with the ship is an annoying bug that triggers whenever you respawn in Arena Commander. This bug causes the ship's yaw axis rotation and maneuverability to be even further reduced. This makes it nearly impossible to get past the first few waves of Vandal Swarm or last more than a few seconds in a PvP match. And while racing in the ship isn't recommended even when it's in top form, the respawn bug makes it even harder to get around the track. Now that we're back in the hangar, let's talk final impressions on the MISC Reliant core. The ship looks amazing and has some really interesting features. Its ability to transform from horizontal to vertical flight modes is particularly cool and may even turn out to be a huge asset once the atmospheric flight model is implemented. However, the ship has a ton of issues. Its poor weapons payload and lack of overall maneuverability are huge liabilities in combat. Not to mention its inability to take a hit without spiraling out of control. Now I realize the core is not meant to be a fighter, but the Tana variant is. And even though it isn't flyable yet, the Tana's heavier armor should make it less fragile, but I doubt the extra mass will do much to improve the ship's maneuverability. When it comes to cargo, I really can't give the core a fair review. Perhaps once the cargo system is released in 3.0 and CIG has had time to balance the core and fix some of its issues, I'll be able to revisit the ship and give it a better review. However, for now, I'd have a really hard time recommending this ship to anyone. Its $65, $65 price tag isn't very high, but for the price, I think you do better with an Aurora 
or possibly even an Avenger Titan. And that about wraps up my review of the Reliant Core. I hope you found it helpful and informative. Now as promised, it's time to give away my LTI Reliant to one lucky viewer. As you can see, I've compiled a list of all the people who commented on my initial test flight video, and I've entered them into this random name picker. So let's find out who our lucky winner is. And the winner is... Johnny Blondini. Congratulations on your new Reliant Core with full lifetime insurance. In, in order to claim your prize, you'll need to have an active RSI account. If you don't have one, you can follow the link in the description of this video to sign up. Using my referral code will give you an additional 5,000 in-game credits to spend on the website or once the game goes live. In order to claim your Reliant, simply click on my name in the video and that'll take you to my homepage. Click About and send me a message. Now in the message, make sure to give me your RSI handle and the email you use to sign up to the RSI account. I'll send it to you as soon as possible. With that out of the way, it's time to go ahead and close off this video. Once again, I hope you enjoyed it, or at least found it informative. If so, make sure to hit that thumbs up button and subscribe for any future content. Until next time, this has been Buzzkiller, and I'll see you in the verse.